when I got addicted to drugs, I was, I was pretty bad. I was the man you didn't want to know. You didn't want to date me, have sex with me. You didn't want to be my friend. I did not care about you. The only people I cared about were the people I was already friends with. I didn't need any new ones, right? I was just a horrible person. Mm -hmm. And then I was probably 31, about that time. And the girl I was dating called me and she said, hey, we need to talk. And I said, okay. And she said, I'm pregnant and I'm leaving you for your best friend. At that time, I was a second degree black belt martial arts. I had been asked by my instructor. He said, hey, we should get you ready for the Olympics. He wanted me to go represent America in 1996, but I got addicted to drugs. So, I mean, I was pretty in shape before that. I had a lot going for me. But when I looked in the mirror, I didn't see that. I didn't see a martial artist. I didn't see a guy who's fixing to be a dad. I saw a junkie. My cheeks were sunk in. My eyes were black. My skin was shiny. My hair was greasy. And I saw a full-blown freaking scummy junkie. And I went, uh, and it was, it, it was like I was just ripped open. And I had never seen myself like that because I always prided myself. I had this long red hair, and it was just, man, it was beautiful. And and I was, I, I, I went from being the life of the party to where I was the party. Hey, Jamie's here, right? I had all that going. I didn't see that in the mirror. I didn't see that at all. And I realized something had to change. And I realized that change had to be me. And I realized it had to be now. McCormick joining us. He is the mastermind behind Skate Angry and just the name alone. Jamie, you got to tell us about that. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Skate Angry is a name that was derived from about 30 years ago. Okay. Uh, when I first got to Oklahoma and I met these guys and all this stuff, we were playing Dungeons and Dragons and comic books and going to concerts. And then a couple of them were like, hey, we skateboard. And I was like, cool. I've never been on a skateboard. And so I didn't have a skateboard, but they had a pair of inline skates, which are the roller blades. Okay. And so I got on these blades and they're skating and I'm skating and I wrecked a lot. I was always in a ditch full of water or a bush or something like that. And I would get up and I would just skate, skate. I would just take off, skate. And a friend of mine went, dang, Jamie, don't skate angry. And even uh -huh. then I thought that'd be a cool name for a clothing line. Uh huh. But of us three, our lives took very different pass one got married two of us got addicted uh to various drugs and then the friend of mine who got addicted with me he ended up killing himself oh my goodness so, yeah so uh skate angry really got put on hold yeah I didn't so think a lot can i just it. ask um how old were you around that time i was 22 okay. about when we started the whole uh skating stuff like that okay and um so it, it kind of got got put on hold and then I was, um, I met a woman named Moza and she introduced me to a company called Market America. And I joined into that and it's been pretty beneficial. I've learned a lot, made, made some good connections. So I was sitting on my couch probably February last year, March, April, somewhere in there. And I was thinking about another stream of income. Yeah. And I was like, I should start skate angry. And then I sat up and I went, I should start skate angry. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my friend who's an accountant. I told her my idea. I said, here's what we want to do. And she said, let's do it. And we got the EIN, the LLC that, you know, we got all the stuff and Added just started up. going with it. And, and look at that. And, and look, look at, that. at that. So for those tuning in and think like, oh my gosh, I don't think I could ever start a business. I don't even right. know the first thing. It really just comes with the decision, right? Yeah, it comes with the decision. I've often heard people say, when an opportunity comes, don't wait till you know how to do it. Take the opportunity and learn. Now, to me, that was odd because if someone offers you to become an airline pilot, you need to know how to fly a plane, right? <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's a fine balance there. But I don't know how to run a business, but I have friends that do. I don't know how to build a website. I have friends that do. I don't know how to do graphic design, but I have friends that do. Yes. So yeah. you don't have to know everything about your business. You just have to have the passion for it and start asking questions, start connecting like I connected with you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Just start making connections of people who are in similar 
areas or categories and just start asking and the yes. right people will, will come along. And I like to say, um, surround yourself with people moving in the same direction, in the same direction. That's all, you know, you just yeah. got to surround yourself with people moving in the same direction. So, right. so skate angry. So it, it's fairly new then it's, um, you know, uh, the concept has been around for a while, but you've officially been in business for what, just over a year, not even a year. Okay. Um, at first, we made Jamie McCormick LLC, and Skate Angry was going to be underneath that. And then my accountant uh, called me about six months ago. She goes, I just made Skate Angry a business. So we made it its own business, got its own LLC. So it's been in business about six months. Okay. You know, we're still working on the website, getting the, the um, extensions in, the shipping, making sure everything's right, the taxes. And like I said, there's a lot to it that I was not aware of on the other end of making a website. I thought it was just make this website, people buy stuff. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> you still got to get the people there. You know, yeah. I've um, talked about, because um, I have a nonprofit that's kind of in formation. I kind of jumped ahead and then realized I needed to take my time. And But yeah. it's really, um, at that time, I was told it's like building an airplane while it's taking off the runway. Like you've got to just, it's in motion, but you've got to just keep rolling with it. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> so I want to dig into... There had to have been an incredible foundation of faith for you to be able to believe in this idea, to act on it, and to just trust that if I move, it will all be okay. Yes. Where did that play into this just taking action? It, it played in the fact that either God knows what he's doing or he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm the believer that he does. You know, in the scripture, it says that God gives the ability to get wealth. And if he gives you the ability that he should, then I believe that he'll give the path for that to come to fruition. But we have to step out and act on it. You know, it's like sometimes we ask God for a cake and we get all the ingredients and the instructions, but we go, oh, that's not a cake. <laughs> we have everything right there. Yeah. So I had this faith of if I do skate angry and I do it correctly and not just to build a bank account, but to actually help people, it'll take off. If I build a community and not just, like I said, a bank account, if I build something for people, it'll take off. And that's where the faith came in at mm -hmm. is we are, I, I believe Elena that we are put on this life to give ourselves away. Mm -hmm. We're here to give our gifts away. Um, now, if God gives you an idea for a business, yeah, we charge for it. But if he gives you a revelation about himself, then we give that away. We yeah. don't charge for it. And I believe this revelation, as I said, our company scripture, I believe it's Psalm 34, 8, and it says, taste and see the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what I want people to do is see that God is good. Yes. And yeah. until I draw my last breath, that's my intent. But that's where the faith came from is you either trust what he says or, or, or you don't. Mm -hmm. And no matter what people believe, we're believing something. Mm-hmm. All trusting something. We're either believing something good or we're believing something bad, something right or something wrong. What do we believe? I love that. And that's that's actually the reason like that we are here is a lot of times you focus on business and the growth. And yes, if you're in business, money has to be part of business or we're not in business. But so often they are so disconnected. Yeah. And I'm here to share that that beat down that you've taken in your life, that, that it's okay to do something with that, turn it into a blessing. And, and to me, I feel like you got to make your dream come true. And those dreams come from knowing that you are here, <clears throat> like you said, yes. to serve a greater purpose, to take that pain and allow it to impact someone else. So do you think of your friend often while you are building this now? Like, is that still thought in your mind or is it your drug addiction or, or what was that point? That's like, you're so surprised today that that breaking point has turned into something that can serve and in, into something good. I look at where I came from even before I was addicted. Um, I've always come from a small town. I think there were 18, 19 people in my graduating class, not many. And I look at where I am now, where people are buying my book, where people are wearing products that I create, you know, shirts and stuff. And I'm like, I'm a small town dude. I came from literally nothing. You know, I, there's no silver spoon in my mouth. There was none of this. But yeah, I'm grateful that I am where I am and that I have the opportunities that I have ahead of me. 
and I don't plan on wasting them. Yeah. And for the first, well, actually for all my life, I've wasted every opportunity. Okay. You know, everything put before me, I just spit on because I just wanted to be friends. I wanted to, excuse my language, I wanted to get laid. I wanted mm-hmm. to be the friend. I wanted to be the party. That's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I look back at all that wasted time. Wow. My goodness. Wow. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I am 53. Okay. If I die on my 80th birthday, I have 27 years of life left. Yes. That's not much. Yes. Yeah. That, that'll go by like that. Yep. And I've, and I read and I can't, I, I, I can't remember who um, said this, but it's um, take care of your minute. Because yeah, if you can take good. care of your minute, then the day, the week, the month, and even the years will take care of huh. themselves. That's good. That's good. It reminds me of the scripture where King David, you know, he prayed, he said, help me. How do you say? He said, um, help me number my days that I may get a heart of wisdom. And that means help me understand life is short, so I may do wise things with what I have. Yes, yeah. That's what it's about. You know, I I don't watch near as much TV as I did. Mm-hmm. I I read somewhere that if you watch every Harry Potter movie, it's like twenty six hours of your life gone. Wow. You start comparing because I've seen all the Star Wars, all the Marvel, all the this and that, and that's a lot of hours. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> you can't get back. So I watch way less TV than I ever used to. Mm-hmm. You know, my friends are like, dude, where are you at? You're not hanging out. I was like, man. I don't have time. I really don't have time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, I'm in that same boat too. People talk about the new episodes or the new series, and I'm like, I ha- I have no idea. You right, know, right. <laughs> right? I don't know. Yeah. So skate angry. So what actually do you do? What does the nonprofit do? Okay, um, I know that what I sent you said nonprofit, but we're probably not going to run that route. It's become okay. more harder than I thought. Okay. But what skate angry is is we're going to give everything we make back to the community, 100% of it. Mm -hmm. After we pay our salary and our expenses, we know you got to have expenses in a bank account. We're going to save, you know, a few few hundred thousand back. Yeah. But we're not going to just build an account, but what we're going to do is give it all back. And our goal is to help people buy homes, get cars. If we drive down the road and see a car broken, pull them over. Hey, we'd like to fix this for you. We want to really genuinely help people. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea behind Skate Angry is to give to this community to engage the skaters and the extreme sporters that if they see an old lady or an old man mowing his yard, pull over and mow it for him. Nice. Let's do something. You know, many people say we're going to change the world and then they get a fat bank account and kind of forget where they came from. Yeah. I pray I never forget where I came from. Yeah. Um, there used to be a, a series on MTV called Headbangers Ball. Mm-hmm. I and remember. Host, I remember that name. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the host at the end of it, he would say, always keep one 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 foot in the gutter and one fist in the gold. And I think that's a good way to live our life. Always keep a foot where you were, but strive for that goldness. Always reach for that crown, but never forget where you came from or you'll forget to help people. So the whole idea of Skate Angry is to give everything back to the community. Everybody who becomes employed with Skate Angry will make the exact same amount of money from myself down to the janitor. Whether it's 30000 a year or 80000 everybody's making the same money. That, no- I have never heard that before, and that is absolutely beautiful. Like yeah. I've never heard that before of anyone doing that. And um, yeah. how awesome. Yeah. There is no need for me to be making, let's just throw a number, let's say $500,000 when I have a janitor struggling to pay his bills. Mm-hmm. How selfish am I to do that? Well, I built this business. No, you had the idea that people under you, they build the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just my idea. That's they're, amazing. They're, that's yeah, a, that's a nugget for, for anybody tuning in to really, really grasp and pay attention to because um that's really cool yeah mm-hmm. i've never heard heard anybody do that before well, so I, um I got that, not not to interrupt i got that idea there's a guy that owns a company i think it's from seattle he lowered his own salary to seventy thousand dollars a year and gave the rest to his employees i don't know if they make the same amount of money but he gave okay. the rest to them and he noticed that they can buy homes they're buying cars their job performance went up they're happier and i thought Dude, why not everybody do that? You yeah, know? because so it that, serves everything. Like it, yeah. it raises the whole, the, the whole, whole company. Yeah, up. I, I love right. that concept. Like I'm gonna probably steal that. <laughs> right now, I'm a single person of uh, like when you talk small business, it's like I put this hat on, I put this hat on, I put this hat on. But as the team grows, I love, I love that idea. I mean, yeah. I really, and really do. Been, yes, and as far as people, I've been very fortunate. The people who believe in skate angry are working for me for free or for mm-hmm. very little money. Like the guy who wrote the PR letter, he said, dude, I'll work for nothing until you start making, and then we'll start increasing. Yeah. And it's cool to have people that are behind what you 
want to do that they're willing to put forth their time and effort. So yeah. that makes it worth, let's pay them when it starts coming in. And and to me, I feel like that's a total, um, it totally shows that when you walk in faith and when you begin leading with that pure intention, it yeah. God will provide. Those people yes. will show up and it will happen because it's it's meant to serve and, and make a difference. Um, right. So you are located in Oklahoma, right? right. Yes. Okay. And then um, you mentioned a book and do you have a clothing line currently? Well, the a clothing line, it's not our own brand, but it's Skate okay. Angry. And okay. we're using other brands like Gildan, Champion, Art of Circle, um, so forth and so forth. We have various products that are on the website. Yeah. But yeah, I wrote a book and that came about. Um, okay. When I got addicted to drugs, I was I was pretty bad. I was the man you didn't want to know. You didn't want to date me, have sex with me. You didn't want to be my friend. I did not care about you. And the only people I cared about were the people I was already friends with. I didn't need any new ones, right? I was just a horrible person. Mm -hmm. And then I was probably 31, about that time. And the girl I was dating called me and she said, hey, we need to talk. And I said, okay. And she said, I'm pregnant and I'm leaving you for your best friend. All in the same sentence. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I went, huh. So I now, now keep in mind, I've been up many days. My my thought process was mm -hmm. not rational at all. Yeah. I hung up the phone and I went now, to wait, bath. Can I interrupt for one second? Just because sure. my brain, was she pregnant with your child or her yes. no, best it friend? Mine. No, it was mine. Okay. Yes. But she was still leaving you to go with yeah. your, okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew like <laughs> what was yes. happening there. Yes. My daughter is definitely mine. Yeah. Red hair, blue eyes. I can deny her if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so well, she tells me that I go in the bathroom and I look in the mirror and at that time I was a second degree black belt martial arts. I had been asked by my instructor. He said, Hey, we should get you ready for the Olympics. He wanted me to go represent America in 1996, but I got addicted to drugs. So, I mean, I was pretty in shape before that. I had a lot going for me, but when I looked in the mirror, I didn't see that. I didn't see a martial artist. I didn't see a guy who's fixing to be a dad. I saw a junkie. My cheeks were sunk in, my eyes were black, my skin was shiny, my hair was greasy, mm -hmm. and I saw a full-blown freaking scummy junkie. Uh -huh. and I went, uh, and it was it, it was like I was just ripped open, and I had never seen myself like that, because I always prided myself. I had this long red hair, and it was just, man, it was beautiful, and and I was, I, I, I went from being the life of the party to where I was the party. Hey, Jamie's here, right? I had all that going. I didn't see that in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that at all. And I realized something had to change. And I realized that change had to be me. And I realized it had to be now. Yeah. Because there was a girl. Oh, I didn't know if it was a girl, but there was yeah. a child coming. Yeah. And ready or not, I'm going to be a dad. Yeah. So yeah. I um, I think I did drugs two more times after that. Mm -hmm. And then I just stopped. There was no rehab. There was no withdrawals. I just, I was done. Really? Wow. And, yeah. And at 31 years of age, I had done everything. I did the one night stands, the fighting, the drinking, the, dr the, the drugging. I had done it all except give God a chance, except go to church. And I asked myself this question out loud. I said, how much more can God mess my life up? Because mine was pretty. It was, I, you know, I've seen what Jamie McCormick can do with his life, and it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. So I started going to church. And although as even as Christians, we up and down, we walk, we fall, we sin. We're, you know, not perfect. I have not looked back. Wow. And if my daughter hadn't come to this world, I, I don't think I'd be alive. Mm -hmm. Not that I was suicidal. I just didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. None it was bound her. to take you down that path. That yeah, it was bound to. Yeah. 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 We actually had a, kind of like, like this motto that we prided ourselves on. When someone new came in, we were going to get high quicker than them, harder, faster, longer, deeper. And you can come along or we're going to leave you in the dirt. And we and, left many people in the dirt. that's just the way it was. Wow. That's just the way it was. Mm -hmm. And I got friends now who are clean and we look back on that and we're like, dude, yuck, you know? <laughs> so after I got clean, I started working at a psych hospital okay. and I worked about 10 years and I talked to people who were, they were hopeless. They were depressed. They were down. And it was all kinds of people, um, businessmen, ex NFL players, teachers. We had a guy that played on Bob's, uh, on Bob Dylan's album in 1979. Okay. And I, I, I got it digress for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I asked him, I said, so how was it spending all that money? He kind of laughed. He said, what money? The album sucked. It didn't sell very well. <laughs> uh, we had writers, I mean, all kinds of people in here. So that can hit anybody. Don't think you're above it. You know, without Christ, you know, if not for the goodness of God, there go I. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I would do this group with these guys 
And when I first started doing it, I didn't know what to say to him. I was like, hi, you guys are cool. Have a good day. You know, I didn't know what to do. And I thought, man, I got, I got to get more real. So I just started telling them my story. And over time they started saying, you should be a motivational speaker. And I went, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Kind of blew it off. Mm -hmm. And then it kept on again. And then a nurse would say, then another staff would say, and then another patient would say it. And then one said that I should write a book. And I went, yeah, whatever. And one lady said, if you put your words on a CD, I would listen to it in my car. And I kind of went, wow. Okay. So I started thinking, you know, maybe, but yeah, whatever. He was going to listen to Jamie McCormick, right? Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where I was doing the best groups in the hospital. I was doing better than the therapist, better than everybody. And I, I think it's because I was just real. I, yeah. boom, here it is. Yeah. And then one lady, she was probably in her 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. She, she was an older lady. She said, I want you to know that your words saved my life. Wow. That, she shared that what, with you. Yeah. And that's when I backed up and I went, okay, God, I've got something to say. Mm -hmm. So I got a hold of a friend, um, Patty Sadler. She owns New Life Clarity Publishing, helped me get my book out, and I started writing it, and it came out last January. Nice. I've sold about 100 copies of it so far around the world, and it's weird to me that people in Africa and Dubai are reading about me. That's that's just weird, you know, in the same time, but that's how the book came about. Okay, and can people um, find your book on your website, or do they need to go to, like, a Amazon or bookstore, or where can they get it? Yeah, it's on Barnes and Noble. It's on Amazon. Okay. Place like that, and it's called A Man Rising. Okay. And I had that name because I walked up to a friend before I, I was thinking about the name of this book. And I was like, Thunder in the Storm. I, you know, I'm the Bulldog, all this stuff. And he said, as I approached him, he said, Jamie McCormick. And I went to shake his hand and he went, A Man Rising. And I wow. went, Wow. Oh, there it there was. was yeah. There, there it was. So it's called A Man Rising. Yeah. And I think because no matter how good we get, we're always rising. Mm -hmm. We're never risen. We're always rising. Mm -hmm. That's always amazing rising. because so. as we um, have, uh, you know, have support from the movement Surrender to Rise that, yes. that's sponsoring the show right now, um, there's a common theme that God is like uh, spreading around right now. And just that rising, um, it's a beautiful, that's beautiful. So people yeah. can can get the book. And and how has that made you feel when you put your story down on paper and people are actually wanting to read it? They want to get their hands on it. Like, do you ever sit back and just think, wow, what a journey so far? <laughs> yeah, I always tell people I've had an interesting life. <laughs> I think my life can be made into a movie. I really do. Mm -hmm. It's it's there's so much more than what we're talking about here. It's oh my goodness. The things I the, the heights I've achieved, the lows I've overcome and where I'm at now to a father. I got two grandkids. You know, there's so much out there. But yeah, I sit back and I'm not so much filled with gratitude as I am in awe of look what God has done to me. Yeah. Look what I he has that. done with me. I love that. So I want to ask a question because this is about providing hope and inspiration to just those that are tuning in. And, and if they do have that whisper of a business and think that like, oh, gosh, I could never do that. That's not me. You know, what is something you can share with that person that really thinks all that good stuff really is for them? That it's just it's just not for me. What like what can you share with them? OK, I want to. I do a teaching called perspective driven purpose because everyone's perspective drives their life, no matter what it is. And it drives them to their purpose or away from their purpose. But one thing I always tell people is you are worthy simply because you exist. And as long as you have breath, you have a purpose. That is beautiful. Simply because you exist in that. And we do have purpose. And I right. like to um, equate that. Like when people say pain to purpose, mm -hmm. um, I like to say pain to power. There's so much power like that, that yeah. uh, power to either lift you up or power to hold you down. And right. yeah, and, and it, that power is then what can push you forward to step into your purpose. Right. I like that a lot. Pain to power. That's really good. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got something there. You need to run with that. <laughs> yeah, I've done trainings and challenge, you know, just things. But pain to yeah. power, because to me, I feel if it's if it is strictly pain to purpose, then everyone would be living in their purpose. Right. And not everyone is. Um, that power can keep you stuck. It can hold you there. Or it really can be that that pillar of strength to move you forward and into that purpose. And so right. it's powerful for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, working at the psych hospital, 
I've noticed that people look at pain in, in one of two ways, a reason to rise or reason not to rise. Mm -hmm. And there were many patients who, when they were there for three or four days, they would come up and they would go, I get it now. And I said, what are you talking about? And they said, after being here and looking at other people's problems, they said, I realize mine aren't that bad. And sometimes it takes us not to judge, but it takes us looking at other people's problems to go, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not that bad. There's a, there's a guy in the military named Sergeant Johnny Jones. Maybe it's Johnny Johns, but he lost both of his legs in an IED explosion. And he goes around and he talks now and people ask him, how can you be so positive not having your legs? And he never answers them, but he asks him this question. He, he, he says, how can you be so negative still having yours? Whoa, that's, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> that really is. Right. That's like, let's hold the mirror up and like, let's Stop right. the press like that. That pauses you for a minute. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So what's next for you? Uh, next is to uh, man, just I have this end goal in mind of Skate Angry being the biggest community in the world. People proud to be a part of it, just giving everything away. So that's the end goal. My problem is I don't know how to get there, okay. but I have people around me who do. Mm -hmm. So what's next for Jamie is I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to try to get my book written into a movie. Okay. I'm going to go as many stages as I can and okay. promote Skate Angry as the biggest next brand that you need to be concerned about. I love that. I love that. And if people want to know more or people want to connect with you, what's the easiest way for them to do that? Well, I have two emails that they can uh, get. One is McCormickMotivation at Yahoo.com. And the other one is McCormick at SkateAngry.com. Okay. So they can get a hold of me there. I don't have my personal website for me, but I have a website for SkateAngry, SkateAngry.com. Okay. And they can check out what it's about there. Very good. Very good. And for those that are tuning in, we will have links and all the information available to you. Jamie, I want to thank you for sharing your story, sharing your heart, awesome. sharing Pleasure. your faith, and sharing your time with us here on Strength Unleashed, The Crowned Journey. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate it. to talk about small businesses it is hard it is tough work it is um you have to invest a lot of time energy blood sweat tears money um all sorts of things before you actually start seeing the reward and there's no way around that either you've got to do the work you've got to believe in yourself you've got to push yourself through there's no other way around it the majority of us we worry are we doing a good job is this what you expected am i doing okay anytime you're doing something new you are creating that baseline you don't have anything to compare it to you've never done it before so you got to just do it and then you can determine from there what needs to be improved what needs to be tweaked but until you do it you just don't know these things and so i just you know me i believe in dreams i'm always transparent i'm always just shooting it to you straight i always just share from my heart and I just want to encourage you, whatever it is that you're holding on to, whatever it is that you're afraid to step into, whatever it is that you're worried about, you're not going to know until you just do it. All right? You're not going to know until you just do it. If you're in small business and if you are struggling to get that traction going, to get noticed, to be seen, to have people want to know about what you're doing. I'm all about supporting small business, but believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, believe in your skill sets, believe in your potential, because if you're already thinking about it, you're already creative for it, but you can't improve and build upon until you actually do it. So get busy, do it afraid, put yourself out there, learn, grow, and surround yourself with people that are actually doing it.